This is one of the most iconic Italian desserts. And if I'm gonna take on a recipe like this and make it my own, I'm gonna make it the best thing I ever made. Some of my best childhood memories are of Italian pastries and going to these incredible bakeries on Bleecker Street in Little Italy. And if you're anybody who's anybody and you're in the know, you're having a cannoli. This is my kind of recipe. Fantastic. As a professional chef, I cooked so much at the restaurant that when I get home, my first instinct is not to cook. If you're gonna cook at home and you're gonna take the time to do it, I say you gotta make a cannoli, like now. First, you drain the ricotta, and you can see all the liquid that's just naturally coming off the ricotta. That is not the cannoli's friend. We want nice, drained ricotta for our filling. So you wanna just pop that into a strainer, put it in the fridge, and just let any excess liquid drain out. So next, I make the dough. Very simply, sifting together the dry ingredients, flour, sugar, and salt. Now to that, I'm gonna add exactly one tablespoon plus two teaspoons of cubed up butter, somewhat soft, and then I just work it into the dry ingredients with my hands, which is fun. I'm also gonna add an egg yolk to this. And then you add the white wine, and that adds a certain tartness. Use the cheapest wine you can get your hands on for this. That's what I say. Drink the good stuff while you're making the cannolis. The other thing to consider is this. We want a fully mixed dough, but we don't want to mix too much. Over mixing anything with flour could lead to a tougher texture. Flatten this out so it just fills out that plastic, and into the fridge we go. While the dough is resting, then you focus on the filling. Powdered sugar, a little bit of allspice, and a little bit of cinnamon. You don't realize cinnamon's kind of lurking underneath every lovely cannoli we've eaten. And now let's introduce ricotta to its flavor center. For me, ricotta can be kind of dense, so I like to whip a little heavy cream. You can use a mixer or a hand mixer for this to whip the cream. I kind of like to do it by hand. I, I have this fantasy that I'm working off a couple pre-canola eating calories. And just fold that into the ricotta cheese and then add your little textural bits. Quarter cup of chocolate chips. And then just for a little bit of citrusy brightness, light zests of lemon. Put the ricotta filling into a pastry bag and then get it in the fridge. So I've put a quart of canola oil in this heavy bottom pot with a thermometer. We're gonna heat this on a nice low heat until we get 360 degrees, optimum frying weather. Then you take your dough out that's had its nap. You roll it nice and thin. This is my rule with this. When you think it's thin enough, roll it about 10 or 20 more times. To a thickness between 1 8 and 1 16 of an inch, you wanna go pretty thin. So I just use a regular ball, a few inches in diameter, cut around it with a knife. Wrap them around the tubes or the cannoli molds. Seal them with just a little bit of egg wash. Flare the edges slightly. Fry them in the tube. Can you hear that sound? That's bubbling cannoli party happening right now. Lift it up out of the oil. Have two towels ready. Hold the shell in one and the mold in the other. Slide it right off. And you're left with this glorious shell. Golden brown, crispy all the way through. Mm. You take the filling out of the fridge, fill it from both sides. Dust it simply with powdered sugar, and it's done. I just love this cannoli. All right, dig in. You bite down on this crunchy tube, kind of still almost slightly warm. That's amazing. And you get this ooze of ricotta with the chocolate chips and the lemon meandering through. I love the cinnamon in it. How does it happen? But it does. And that's part of the magic. It's one of the best things I ever made. I like That's it. amazing. Mm.